two days of DRL juries, uh, final thesis candidacy juries, which Ben has been put through the treadmill already today and tomorrow. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have Ben back uh, as a regular visitor to the AA. Um, as an esteemed alumni, uh, after studying at the Rietveld Academy, Ben uh, completed his diploma uh, with honors uh, 21 years ago here at the AA. Went on to teach a very successful diploma unit for a few years uh, and is currently professor of conceptual design at uh, the Städelschule in Frankfurt. Um, in terms of practice, uh, straight after graduation with Caroline Boss set up uh, Van Bertel and Boss Architecture Bureau in Amsterdam. Uh, later rebranded uh, as UN Studio and expanded um, uh, as a kind of network of practitioners theorists, etc. Um, Ben's and Caroline's projects uh, include the Arnhem Central Station, the Galleria in Seoul, a um, number of others which I'm forgetting of course, but I'm sure we'll see all sorts of stuff tonight. Um, the title of the lecture, Theatre of, of Imminence, uh, refers to a project, a kind of cultural project um, of ideas and imagination between artists, architects and a cultural theorist. Join me please in welcoming Ben van Berkel. possible to dim the lights a bit more <laughs> this can this also be dimmed a little bit more this part can this be dimmed also a little bit more yeah thanks so 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 thanks uh, all for uh, coming uh, uh, I heard that Richard Rogers was uh, quite uh, uh, happy to be uh, back at the AA again as well. Uh, I, I tell you, I always like to be here uh, even after the 21 years um, because uh, it feels uh, really at home and, and for many re reasons. Many things haven't changed, I, I think he uh, said. I think many, change, many changes happened, but um, um, maybe I'm going to talk about it a little bit tonight. Um, so the theater of imminence, um, it's, it's, the talk is going to be a little bit um, dealing with uh, some of our latest uh, projects, but also our latest thinking in our work. And um, one could argue maybe the ar that architecture could be an imminent uh, theater, uh, whereby we create worlds in a world of imminent uh, realities. Um, the play. And the way how we work with performances or performance envelopes is what uh, what has been, uh, of course, triggering uh, our, our recent work. Mm. Architecture, as we know, is is often dealing with a play of a lot of values, and and these values can be interesting to work with. But sometimes you might think. Why, why do we always have to deal with the aesthetics, the commercial and cultural values? I mean, we deal with it, but sometimes you like to think of an architecture where you sometimes can forget these uh, aspects. And I don't want to predict where architecture can go through, but, but sometimes it's interesting to speculate on, on, a, f on a form of uh, destiny where, where architecture might go to tomorrow, only tomorrow. But, but as we know, architecture can end up somewhere in a uh, ruin. We could argue that every architecture is the mother of, of a ruin. But at the same time, um, and as maybe a, you could see that as a negative interpretation, but, but I see it also as a very positive uh, interpretation. Uh, and a second interpretation might be that architecture is, is not so important. I will go into that uh, more later. And, and again, you could see that as a negative and a positive interpretation. Um, my opinion, architecture can be uh, maybe somewhere to be found between these two statements. Architecture uh, of tomorrow, of today, could communicate and is and is a complex expression of a material organization, of a, of a common vision, and of a collective uh, condition. Uh, 
and architecture embraces this critically and hopefully embraces this in, an, in, an, in a very critical manner. But it is not only this reality where, where I'm interested in what brings architecture further. It is the, um, it is the aspect of the object of architecture uh, and not a form on, on, on its own who sometimes can put uh, these value systems on and off. And this aspect of how, how an architecture can put something on and off, I'd like to uh, talk about tonight. So, let me start with the first image. Uh, the, the, you probably recognize this image. It's, an, uh, it's a facade we did for this uh, project in Seoul. Uh, and everything what in you find in this facade is dealing with this maybe aspect I, I introduce you to. Uh, it's an equal potential organization of a circular disk um, there is a light behind it, but the light is programmed so that it turns in continuous different uh, models of light. So it is, uh, there is something of an equal potentialness in this system, but at the same time it's having this fluidness and this uh, unpredictability of the way how it can generate of an, yeah, an, an form of complexity uh, we can uh, then experience when we see it, the project in time. And this notion of, of the way how we can work with with time and architecture and maybe far more complex times and, and maybe you know we can talk about sometimes five or six times in the way how you can experience uh, today in architecture and, and maybe with a, a project uh, like the Mercedes-Benz Museum um, and for that you have to experience it uh, we maybe hopefully prove to that that you you walk almost in three or four times when you walk through this museum but within the way how we look at urban planning today and clearly that was uh, today visible in the presentations, we are not anymore looking down towards an, a top-down strategy of urban planning, but it is the most interesting today is that we can uh, measure and uh, group uh, in a critical package programs and, and, and um, user groups into a direction where now we can start to think hey, if the in the evening is not that program, uh, where there is no social interactiveness and people don't like to step out of, out of the train after nine or seven o'clock, maybe let's see if we can introduce there a night program. So this idea of slow programs related to fast programs or programs in a clockwise uh, uh, manner to be so organized in a different uh, 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 attitude than we uh, uh, planned architecture before or urban ar architecture, you could argue here, is something what we now introduce more in a uh, bottom-up approach. Similarly, like in a material organization where I talked about this aspect of the way how we can merge a moray of the material and the, and the, the mobility of, of the two systems, <coughs> like the, again the equal potentialness of a, of a possible system towards the flexible system is something that you can test in there as well. As you know, in the latest project, the, the, the Villa Element, we uh, similarly tried this idea of how in an equal organizational aspect, turning it to the twist of the middle of the house, where, where it, maybe the, you could call it the semi-public uh, um, quality of the family meets uh, in this twist, everything comes together in this house. Here the infrastructure, the, the landscape, uh, the social interactiveness all intensifies in that moment of the house. But in the same time, you can hide in the corners of the house uh, and in front of the, the house, uh, what is in a box like uh, kind of big living room, um, you can hide yourself as well. So so it, on one end, maybe it goes against the, 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 the modern type of uh, the way how in, in, in a way before we, we try to believe that openness and, 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 and extreme flexibility would generate an enormous amount of uh, generosity towards uh, uh, social interactiveness. But as we know today, we'd like to live apart uh, together, sorry, in one house. And, um, and that is what, where all this house is about. But this transformative aspect, is that's where I'd like to talk about as well. So, so it's not so that, that, as you know in our work, that we are promoting any particular kind of predictability of a soft organization or a hard organization, but it is particularly this transformative model of the way how you might uh, play between an infrastructure or uh, let's say an equal potential organization uh, whereby we uh, play with that model. 
But what I'm talking about here as well is that it is not only the transformative aspect in the in in the way how one uh, formalizes these activities within a house, but specifically it is also uh, the way how you read these uh, transformative uh, aspects. So, so there again, there is not uh, a, a particular meaning you can point at at once when you read this house. Like for instance, in this installation, we did for. Uh, um, a museum in um, in America uh, a year ago, close to one and a half year ago, whereby uh, we argued that that although in this installation we we tested the idea of uh, playing with the idea of the holiday home, and how how strange it is that we often uh, project uh, this holiday home as a form of escapism outside our own home, and why would it not be possible to rethink? The whole question of the the retreat uh, towards the way how we could bring it to our own home. So so how can be that projected projected on our own home? So this squeezing of a uh, hybrid uh, programmatic condition uh, was introduced in this uh, in this uh, installation, although n never really fully explained. And and it was quite nice because uh, although a lot of uh, reminiscences of other projects came into the project. Uh, People really during opening and, and uh, visit, uh, visiting uh, the place uh, calm down and, and re really uh, lay down <coughs> into this uh, in this object. But talking ab again about the transformative material experience, uh, like in the in a project we did in Holland, an office project where maybe the image is not th the most important image you experience first when you see the building, but it is particularly the after image what generates. Double readings is where where we uh, play with, like uh, as I explained in this project uh, in the beginning in Seoul, where again this was this was the hope of the client. They were arguing, "Oh, could it not be great that we have such a fantastic brand, series of important brands? Could we not uh, really have all these uh, billboards on the building?" But we we believe that it was too much of a an hassle and actually energy-wise uh, not so uh, friendly to do this uh, onto the facade, although it was very difficult to um, convince an, uh, Louis Vuitton and an, uh, Gucci for this. But, but you can imagine that, that this was of course their dream. We argued if you introduce a more pixt pixelated or a pointillist facade, like, like maybe a, a painting almost, would it not be great to really then generate a building what would stand out as a lamp into the city? And, and again, for this you have to visit the city. Uh, the, the, the building uh, generates a highly reflective uh, amount of uh, light onto the surroundings and really operates for many reasons as an attractor uh, into, this, uh, into this network of a new part of the town of Seoul. Or another argument is the, the, the invisibility of the, um, the single surface in, in the Mercedes-Benz uh, project. You, you cannot see this continuous surface going into the uh, project, but it is the most important constructive element hanging from the cores, uh, cantilevering out almost for 33 meters in this museum. And what is the most interesting for me is that in this project you you cannot read the scale of the building so well. It's often so that you, you think when you stand in the building or you see the building from the outside, um, it looks like if the buildings are only having three floors, but, but are really uh, around uh, uh, more than 12 plateaus hanging onto each other, whereby a floor is in to be found in this beam of uh, the construction inside uh, the museum. So this this is maybe another topic uh, I will bring in later on, this non-existence of the proper scale related to many structures you bring all, all together in the, in the parametric aspect in the, of the way how you guide design is what I'd like to emphasize, what can come out of the spatial experience of the, of the building itself. And I think there uh, the argument is that, that we should uh, work after because, or go after in the work. Um, because the reading and the spatial qualities are, of course, the, the ones who are, in a way, communicating with, with, with a an, with an public construct where you make this architecture for. And not only in the physicality of the architecture, but like in the building process of this project, uh, 
we had uh, almost every day 50 changes to introduce in the design process. We had 200 companies to work with, only one year to do it. So the enormous amount of uh, interactiveness and management of the way how we uh, guided design in, into, an, into a parametric model, and you, uh, I've many times talked about this here at the AA, uh, th this, this model was an, uh, an, uh, again also a parametric uh, model whereby um, uh, the computer could animate all the changes in a few minutes uh, and could be communicated back to all the specialists in the same day. So if we would have more than 550 or clo sometimes even close to 100 changes in a day, then we could change all the local changes in the whole and then animate it over the whole system back to all the specialists. So. I would like to also emphasize that parametric design is not interesting in the moment when you design yourself, but when you design with your, with your group of specialists together. Um, and again, that's, a, that's something about the transformative aspect of design again. It's not about that, you, that the design is actually coming together in the way how you pr predict it by yourself, but in the way how it is uh, generating and proliferating uh, capacity in, an, in a team uh, structure. So this organizational aspect and the way how you guide the organizational principle through a model, uh, we, we have lately uh, promoted quite a lot as we call it the, the design model, uh, whereby a particular pattern, uh, in this case uh, for a new project in uh, Japan, a pattern could be so structured in a mathematical order that you know that you can not only use it in a in a in an, uh, v uh, horizontal sense, but in a total three-dimensional uh, manner, not not again in section alone, but in in the way how you might walk through the building. In this case, with open gardens to ventilate the building uh, within the structure, um, and uh, uh, bring a certain amount of uh, uh, um, resonance in the way how you communicate with the geometry within the building and. With, with, with early projects like the Möbius House, uh, where we only used uh, three angles in, in order to make the complexity of the Möbius House, so everyone thinks it's a very complex building, but it's actually, serially, it's very simple because we had only three angles. We repeated nine degrees, uh, sorry, seven degrees, nine degrees, and the 11 degrees came continuously back in the whole production of the design, whereby, of course, it generates a coherence in producing, but in the same time, it creates Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, it's so important to change your password every day. <laughs> so good. So, so this aspect of the serial, I'd like to emphasize that the serial of the 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 use of the geometrical uh, production. Uh, not only production, maybe I have to say, but also experience uh, is, is very important in the way we believe to bring in a particular kind of balance between your complex quality, you introduce spatial complex qualities, as we uh, like to uh, argue, uh, but on the other hand, also to give it a kind of calmness in the way how you um, uh, uh, go through the, the, the project itself, as, as, um, uh, as you can see in this uh, new department store building. Uh, um, in uh, Tokyo, uh, we, where we work on. So, um, 
uh, within this uh, project, uh, it's a small office, experimental office building for the Fraunhof in uh, Germany, where uh, new, f uh, new ways of uh, uh, working uh, uh, strategies are introduced. We similarly used uh, 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 ideas whereby uh, the model or the design model and the program could be uh, activated in such a way that it could be um, tested according to, again, computational techniques and, and as we we all already for a long time promote the aspects of contemporary techniques is that we have to be in the same time very careful to be to guide them as i argued before but what what is the most interesting is today that you can almost like dress a building so or cut haircut the building <laughs> so quickly and so so interestingly that by changing a column you immediately can see the effects on the way how you uh, in the way how you script and I sorry that I've not animated this but um, that, that you can readjust very quickly the all integral qualities of, of the project as I said with all your specialists because that's where where the most interesting part of the parametric uh, comes in when it is guided but at the same time when it is managed with with uh, with, with your whole uh, uh, team but again uh, this is this is not my argument that new techniques are important, but the most important is, uh, like maybe as this art piece, that architecture in a way or the building could generate um, as, as an object not only uh, an, an, an instrument of its object towards the public or towards an experience, but that it specifically, like this, this uh, art object can also produce uh, art on its own as well, like, like maybe architecture can produce another architecture. Um, I don't really, maybe I'm standing on a cable here. You know, I'm losing my rhythm. <laughs> I lose my rhythm. <laughs> now also, now it's not going on, you see. So it's not working anymore. The whole lot of power. There is no power. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's going on. Yeah. But maybe can you please add the cable? No. no. <coughs> no, it's not where oh. it's, it's reading it. Okay. Now it's all over start again.
Yes. So this is a uh, project we did um, in, um, in Frankfurt. It's called, uh, yeah, this was actually the, the theater of imminence. We, we did with, uh, with um, the State of Schule, um, a human studio, and a collaboration uh, of uh, uh, Johan Betten and uh, Sanford Quinton. And this, this small object, uh, referring back to, to the way how one can make um, an interaction between the different systems you can introduce in, in a design, was tested uh, in a quite small gallery uh, where the Porticus in Frankfurt, maybe you know it, um, where um, here are several uh, elements in an, in, an, uh, in a device of an object were um, introducing different heights, uh, spaces to uh, perform different um, uh, lectures. But the most important here was that there was a projection introduced with on, with on uh, uh, on the object itself, so that it almost was like if you were flying in, in a virtual uh, a condition when you were sitting up and listening to the talk or the, the, the conversations one was having there into the space and created in this uh, interactivity uh, between um, the projection and, and the, 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 the structure itself a continuous uh, quality of again the aspect of the non-existence of uh, scalar qualities where I, I talked about uh, before. And of course, uh, uh, with someone like Sanford Quinter who uh, believes that every object is alive, um, um, got so excited that uh, that spontaneously gave a lecture when, uh, when, when he was not asked for it. Uh, <laughs> Um, but let me go deeper into another theater where we have been working on over the last uh, two and a half years, and it is a uh, theater, is again, a bit bigger theater than the one I showed you before, but it is, it is a theater in the city of uh, Lelystad, and um, often um, friends ask me, why do you, you know, you're showing this project quite often, you, why are you so fascinated? It's almost that, that uh, it comes over that you are more interested in this recent project than, than your Mercedes-Benz building, but that's, I tell you, is not at all the case. But the condition of this project was interesting to work with. It was a, a low-budget building. Um, it, it, uh, we could do it quick, but we had some fantastic uh, local support and an incredible team to work on this project, and it was quick. It was very quick again. Uh, and often, maybe as one knows, as one I don't know if you sometimes paint or draw, but um, what the interesting is, uh, thing is of quickness is that you have to be more fo focused and um, even when you see the drips uh, in the painting, what is happening with this building a bit, uh, and maybe we use some cheap paint, uh, the nice thing is that the effect of it is, uh, um, yeah, we, we are quite uh, happy with because it's so, uh, the, the oppositional of sometimes the, the, it's a project of the oppositional, that's what I would like to say. Uh, the f in the first uh, dialogue we had with a client, it was a, not a competition, but a, um, a tender. Uh, we uh, were asked to, uh, in uh, five, six slides, to explain why we were interested in the project, and we were allowed to do a little more, but we, um, for once we didn't do this, and uh, um, maybe it was uh, uh, appreciated quite a lot, because we asked, argued that um, the building should not only be a theater, but that it should be a sustainable programmatic uh, project whereby it not be, will be used only during the night, but particularly during the whole day for, for uh, interactive uh, uh, um, um, events uh, out of the town itself from the morning till the uh, late evening. Another argument we came up was that uh, the town, uh, Lelystad, is a very dark uh, uh, city in the sense of uh, I don't know if you know, Almere, for instance, in uh, Holland, or, or some of the satellite towns around Amsterdam, but they, they have been built so quickly that, that often they have a uh, quality of an architecture you do, would like not to be uh, happy about. And uh, in the same time, uh, uh, an, an quality of an, of an uh, uh, a, a similarity, what, what is uh, often not uh, very Dutch in its uh, way how you can uh, um, uh, s 
uh, put it in a uh, right context. But what is amazing, if you go around, um, Lelystad is the, the landscape, especially the Isomere. And uh, I was particularly going there because I, I had read once an argument of uh, Gerard Richter that, that he believed that the, the, the Dutch uh, light as the 17th and 16th century painters uh, used it in their paintings, was not anymore so powerful as uh, we all uh, can see it today. Uh, because his argument is that it is uh, so that the Afsluit Dijk, so the, the dijk in, 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 the, in the top of uh, the, the Ijsselmeer in Holland, uh, killed the light of, um, of um, this Dutch light. And, and honestly, I, d I thought it was quite interesting interpretation, but I didn't believe it. So, so uh, and honestly, uh, it is not true. That that light is so amazingly open and colorful and, and, and uh, differential, differential in you if you are uh, uh, coming uh, to that uh, Isomere. That when I uh, left um, watching uh, uh, all these light conditions, I for a while I could almost not see. Uh, the light anymore. I mean, I, I not that I was colorblind, but that that you know, I I liked it. I liked it a lot. This colorfulness of uh, the context, and I was wondering and arguing to its uh, the city if that that quality could not be brought back to the city again. And through maybe a series of uh, college studies, um, we we try to bring in a comp um, an opposite uh, color. Uh, then let's say the existing colors of the skies in, in uh, as we know them quite gray in Holland and sometimes blue uh, in order to uh, let the color also mutate and differentiate um, uh, according to the way how we played with, with different colors on top of each other but also with the light coming onto the colors uh, onto the building and, and orange uh, people uh, are a lot of uh, questions are coming up about the orange but uh, we simply use it as a as a color what adapts very easily a lot of uh, other colors the building is uh, organized with two uh, main theaters there is a uh, quite large theater of seven of uh, thousand well that's for dutch tenants uh, uh, for satellite towns quite large seven of thousand seats and then there's a room another theater for more than 200 uh, uh, seats um, another uh, aspect and when we were chosen because I've got to say that after the first uh, uh, interpretation we were chosen to uh, make this theater we we said that it would be the most interesting that when you enter the building that it will be uh, the most exciting to touch the handrail as the as the key entrance towards the whole building and that is public uh, connection uh, of bringing the people up would then be co connected towards the skylight or a large skylight and then flip over to the whole um, uh, faceted uh, facade of uh, the, the outside of the uh, building. This aspect of the facetedness um, was another argument uh, we brought further into the design to also play with the, the principles of, of the worlds in the worlds where I talked about uh, we wanted to introduce in this uh, theater, so, so the facetedness was maybe related to the way how from many angles you would see many buildings. So as we know, if you do a four uh, uh, corner facade and you play with uh, this principle of the facetedness, what is quite nice is that you maybe generate more than, uh, than, than 200 facades than uh, four facades. Anyway, this was the first study of the um, foyer going up from the lower part, uh, uh, moving up towards the uh, higher part in order um, to bring the two theaters together because uh, what is quite difficult is that in this smaller space, only of a thousand square meters, we have to bring in all the people up to these different parts of the theater. Um, so this is the, that uh, aspect of the, the different uh, facets I uh, talked about before and here the studies of the way how we could introduce with that the different uh, facets in, in a way how they were connected to light studies and how they would generate continuously different colors within the uh, project. You, you enter the building from this side here, but as you see on the lower uh, part of the, the project, uh, the building is uh, again having a far more softer like organization, well, uh, if you go up, it turns into 
more uh, kaleidoscopic uh, uh, structure. So again, it transforms into co continuously into another geometry. And and maybe as argued before, we have worked often with this principle. This was for the idea of the 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 mm, the harbor project in uh, Genoa, where a grid system opened itself up, but still is having an equal potential uh, values of the. The, the geometry in there in order to make it again uh, buildable and to make it per, um, corrosive towards lower parts of the building and a higher part. Uh, here similarly from the theater uh, because that needed to be the major concrete uh, box we had to uh, introduce a transformative geometry not only in plan but also in uh, section in order to uh, hang uh, the major open space and particularly the vo uh, voyeur because there are no uh, constructive elements within this voyeur to, to be uh, introduced uh, over there in order to um, make open connections towards the building. You see here the development. So you see here the uh, major concrete uh, uh, structure of the theater and there uh, the smaller theater. Um, what what is quite uh, what was a major uh, difficulty was to first of all let this uh, box stand not only on the two columns it's standing on but to uh, more or less cantilever it out from the steel construction so it's a hybrid construction but also to again uh, to make uh, this space uh, almost uh, uh, column free. So you can see here this, this box is almost hanging onto the steel and hanging out of this uh, major concrete uh, uh, structure. And again, this, this part is having uh, sometimes a cantilever, although it's sitting on this wall, but it's more a balancing wall uh, uh, here in 39 uh, meters. Of course, uh, having two theaters in one building was, was quite a uh, task, uh, and of course for that to uh, introduce uh, separate uh, uh, foundations uh, in order to make sure that uh, no sound and vibration would move over from one part of the building to the other part. Uh, here the building in uh, development, and, and maybe here, uh, these are the last photographs, you can see that within the different condition of the light, the building continuously changes in, uh, in this other otherness where I, I uh, refer to. Uh, the building really smokes uh, <laughs> because all the installations are introduced on the uh, areas where uh, we had the in-between space between the theater and the roof. Uh, for that reason, had not to put any kind of installation on the roof itself and use the in-between areas as a buffer zone um, to 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 protect uh, on the one hand uh, sound <coughs> going outside the building, uh, but in the same time use this as a protector zone to um, not heat up the building too uh, too uh, too intensely, and uh, introduce another argument to reduce down the amount of material uh, used for the building because as you understand that if we would have followed all the boxes, that would have generated uh, uh, far more material than linking it in, in this manner. Uh, very quickly, uh, you enter the building again from the low part, you have a uh, major uh, entrance on this side here. Garderobe, uh, uh, dressing rooms here, the major loading docks are connected to the uh, bigger theater. Uh, if you come up here, then the dressing rooms are intertwined with with the front of the building so and, and all the actors and people who perform here I love that because they they can see who's uh, coming into the building and uh, reduce with that they argue a form of stage fear uh, because they see the public and they're not in a black hole behind the uh, uh, building um, you come up higher and then uh, you have the entrance towards the second theater uh, with their own dressing rooms uh, etc uh, multifunctional rooms for other activities are on this third floor as well. The light in the, in the foyer is picking up continuously uh, this aspect of, uh, again, like we have on the outside of the building, uh, turquoise, uh, uh, more purple uh, colors, um, and especially there where it changes daylight or uh, evening light. 
And you can see there's ozone here, maybe, you know. Uh, performance have been actually strange enough more locals use the, the foyer more for performance spaces than uh, than some of the theater and it's that 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 is maybe the most convincing uh, for me aspect of that what i argued before that the building is uh, uh used in many uh, aspects uh, during the day again the the, the light uh, coming onto the facade what i argued before uh, and the reflection of the sky making not only the red, red, or orange, but uh, the yellow, more yellow, and the red, more pink. Well, we did a lot of 3D studies in order to make sure that that the overlapping of the details and uh, and the, uh, the the colors of uh, the details would uh, make sh make sure that they would have a um, uh, very interesting or m minimal finish. This is the other side of the building you see here, this hanging uh, volume. This is a view from the city. And of course, I mean, in the beginning, everyone was saying, why, why, why this color, why in our city? <laughs> <laughs> but our argument was that, that, <laughs> that you could point at it. And that was, you know, that was the question, where can we point in our city to a nice new cultural center? So you, if you're in the, in the plane going to Amsterdam, you can really point it. But strange enough, if you see the building on a gray day, and you see a bit the, 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 f the strangeness of this town, uh, in a on a gray day, the, the, the contextual quality of the color uh, matches a bit with uh, the, the brownness of uh, the, the theater. Um, itself is is a room as uh, we are ourself quite uh, uh, ourselves quite interested in the theater, but also specifically music. We did a lot of studies, uh, acoustic studies for this theater, and all these uh, plays with the facets here are connected to the acoustic uh, auralizations, as we uh, uh, did them in a computer uh, with a lot of uh, international specialists. And the argument was that the facets could only work in the beginning of the theater, but when we introduce them to the back, they would start to generate a lot of uh, echoes on the on the balcony zone. So continuously we changed the, the, the sizes of the uh, facets and the, and the openings in the facets according to these acoustics uh, uh, tested um, in the project. The stage is, is large, uh, as uh, a lot of uh, stage designers argue, the, the best because a uh, Russian ballet could uh, be on this, uh, on this, uh, could be playing on this uh, stage, but we tried to make a very intimate um, theater so that that you would not have a uh, too deep view into the theater, and uh, for that reason, fire regulations gave us the possibility not to have a cross uh, path in the middle, but to have paths on the sides and to really bring the theater very close to the. Uh, um, to the to the actors, and that that is actually what is working the most. Uh, f uh, that's the argument from the actors. The most interestingly is that the acoustics, of course, work in the room, but they work the most importantly uh, uh, for the theaters uh, for the actors uh, the best. Many color studies again for the way how we could with the acoustic panels suggest a particular kind of reader of changing uh, the color. Although one night I was not happy, and. Uh, uh, really uh, was believing that uh, all because I paint myself um, that it could be done better and went up to just make sure that that, that it could be done better <laughs> and it looked better in the end although uh, at the openings night uh, there were all these keys going around and, uh, and not only damaged some of uh, uh, the paint but even some uh, guests uh, in the in the room um, here, the, the theater by night, um, and and this this image uh, shows uh, the the way how the building not only is having this uh, openness and this uh, many sidedness uh, I talked about, but also in a particular way uh, connects itself to there where the po most important public areas are there to be connected to. So again, uh, they they are dealing with there where you see the public and where the public is invited within the building. Um, 
And the last, but I do this quite quickly, is uh, this project because I, I can tell you this is a project we have uh, published too early, and what you will see tonight is uh, the latest uh, images because it has never been presented with all the uh, landscape and, and the finishes uh, you can find in this house. I, I already explained the, the house maybe in detail uh, in this uh, photograph, um, but I'd like to maybe argue that this is maybe an, you could argue a, a kind of home theater. Because you live not here alone with the family, but particularly in, an, in a continuous platform uh, what twists in the middle and what carries also in the middle the construction of the house. So it goes from this, this box, a twist in this middle uh, towards the split of the house and then it carries this cross uh, and this cantilever for part uh, with also a, a flying steel column underneath it. But again, kitchen, dining, the, the major uh, uh, public, uh, semi-public and semi-private parts of the house are related to this twist and the way how you can uh, guide um, uh, the public, uh, semi-public forces within this house with this uh, landscape uh, gesture in, in the house. So it's uh, uh, almost so that we wanted to uh, let the house uh, move with the way how it could go uh, following up also the hill you we uh, found onto the side. So here you see that study of the way how this uh, central twist carries the, the major construction of the house. But, but, but the house is playing with this doubleness again of the, the, the mediation of the, the reflectiveness of this context. It picks up on the one hand the colors of the surrounding, but, but generates continuously different images while you are walking around the house. Um, and, and is sometimes so uh, picking that up, so much picking that up that it is not clear where the house ends or the landscape uh, starts. As you maybe particularly can see in this uh, image where, where, where it is almost so that if you're looking to a, to a, a picture of a, of a picture uh, here, um, the, the way how we uh, treated the staircase and the handrail, because we didn't want to make a handrail as a handrail, but we wanted to have a reflection of geometrical elements coming also from the facade back into the stair, and, and treated the stair um, like an, a separate element, uh, emphasizing a bit this uh, movement, this, this curvilinear movement into the house. Actually, this house was designed before the Mercedes-Benz building, and all these principles of, uh, of uh, ideas we uh, tested in this house were later on uh, uh, transformed to the uh, uh, museum. Uh, we almost worked for seven years on this house. Uh, uh, construction was there for maybe, we, maybe around three years because it's, as we maybe know from uh, working in America, it's not very easy to do a house like this in concrete. So we uh, used steel, um, almost in a neutral-like manner, a steel, wood, uh, plaster, and, and all the sort of uh, uh, basic uh, elements where often one builds with in, um, basic materials where one often uh, works with in America. And, and uh, that, that principle of uh, aspects of after images is where, uh, where where we have worked with quite so much over the last few years that, that it's not only the image what you see of the house, but the, the continuously reflectiveness of images you can uh, proliferate with, with these kind of effects with, with a glass that is half bronze. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's not a real strong bronze glass, but it's lightly tinted bronze. So y as you can see it from the inside out, it is not so closing it off. But we uh, were able to create that uh, effect from the inside out and did many tests to get that, uh, uh, that principle working. But it is particularly that maybe after image is not the most important to work with, it is particularly the afterthoughts that you'd like to produce with an after image, that you'd like to come back to it. And I can tell you this client made this house, is a Russian client, only as a dasha, dacha, whereby 
he uh, would only come to the house in the weekend, but, but I tell you, he's, he's there almost every day. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and particularly the, the, the relationship with the landscape is quite uh, fantastic uh, during many parts of the year. Um, and maybe, uh, again, this dialogue with the la landscape is uh, the most important, not only the way how, again, the glass, but details of the house play with that notion of the reflectiveness uh, and we maybe this is an example we already know but reflection is 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 used in as a basic principle in uh, the design of the house so again um, maybe here this continuous aspect of uh, the proliferation of uh, a world in a world and and creating this imminent realities is a part of uh, a house what uh, what what is maybe the most important where we are after that, that it is not only design techniques and the principle of design techniques we, we uh, work with alone, but we are particularly uh, interested in uh, avoiding maybe sometimes a value system to work with uh, in architecture. Although, you, as I said, it is almost impossible, but, but to, to play with the primitive of, uh, primitive is maybe uh, difficult to say, but maybe primitive, uh, um, reductiveness of architecture is sometimes important to understand in order to make it proliferating and that's what I'd like to emphasize so maybe architecture could be expanded even more than we uh, than we sometimes imagine thank you very much Before everyone clears that, we'll, we'll have a few questions. I, I would, I mean, I'd just like to maybe more a comment on the, the, the transformation of the body of work of, of your office over the last uh, decade or decade and a half or so from maybe an emphasis earlier on on infrastructural and spatial dynamics, <coughs> diagramming, trying to concretize in a way the kind of performance of buildings and spaces and larger scales as well. I, I mean, I, when you said why color, I've been wondering why color for a good couple of years, seeing the projects and not really, uh, I don't think you've been here for a couple of years to lecture. The, the Galleria project, the theater, a uh, number of others, which really are highly experimental in a way with dynamics as a kind of visual and material kind of dynamic. Mm. And it's a, it's a very different kind of emphasis in the work. And in a way, a, in a, I, I kind of see it as a, a as a sort of maturity of, of an understanding the effects of really the built piece, mm. rather than you know working with kind of contemporary tools and techniques, and I think your summary kind of says very much to do with that shift in, in working and emphasizing singularly the, ki the kind of transformation from the kind of digital realm and invention and to really experimenting with, uh, as your last image or, or the last couple of projects suggest even, the after image is what it is that you understand and you know, um, the product of, of, of all of that design work, which is really the, pe the physical piece that one is left with, mm. which, and the dynamics that, that are inherent to it as a relationship between light, environment, um, the experience of its users, etc. There really is a kind of shift in, in the work over the last, last few years. So yes. to me, I think the, the why color has been answered. Yeah, you, you, you answered it, uh, but, but I mean, the c you, you particularly asked uh, <coughs> in a slight, uh, uh, in a, a small sentence, part of your sentence, uh, why color, but um, uh, it's difficult to answer because sometimes I, I think like maybe in within this project where almost no color is used, maybe apart from the bronzeness of the glass and, and uh, maybe the, the, the color of the surroundings, the brownness of the house. I, I think color is is explored in architecture, but sometimes I think that that my interest is there where particularly where color is no color. So so where it picks up so many other aspects than than only the color, and uh, that's where where my maybe the interest is of color. You know that it is uh, like maybe how I talked a bit about the light that light can transform uh, and and. And light is not about color. Light is about light, and and maybe maybe this play between spatial effects, and 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 how spaces connect to time, 
uh, that aspect of time, how that can be brought into the way, how that can be emphasized by color, is what I what I like in the way how you can some yeah sometimes use color. Um, like for instance the the, the theater, although again I argue that it is almost no color. It, what is nice about the orange is that it is so technical. I like the, techni the technical color or the, the technocratic aspect of the color, yeah. wh where sometimes it can disappear into a more kind of landscape color when it, when it, when it uh, catches on other colors. Yeah. So again, the, the, the effect of it, uh, of this technocratic aspect, is, um, is not again something you can point to as one uh, interpretation of the color al uh, alone. Uh, other questions from the audience? <laughs> You've left them speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I could invent a question for you if you want. <laughs> well, I think it's been such a long day yeah. for much of the room and we could probably go on for a long time asking you questions.